If you have your Bibles, turn to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. Today we're going to finish off a series we've been in for some time. We've been talking about the God-shaped needs that we all share. In spite of our differences, and there are many, in spite of our differences, there are many God-shaped needs that unify us all together. We all share them. And they're dominating needs. We're not talking about needs that you can you know, put aside or sit on the shelf or ignore. No, these needs demand our attention and only God can satisfy these needs. As I've described the last few weeks, when we look to someone else or something else to do what only God can do to satisfy those needs in our lives, when we look somewhere else, two things happen. We set that person or that thing up for failure and we set ourselves up for disappointment. I'm just telling you, relationships crumble under the pressure that's placed on that relationship when somebody expects the other person to do what only God can do. So we talked about how only God can fully satisfy our need for purpose, our needs for love and acceptance, our need for identity. Today, I want to conclude with a God-shaped need. Christian, listen, a God-shaped need that if we don't allow God to f satisfy this one, it cripples, it cripples our Christian testimony. Allowing God to satisfy these needs is vital, is vital for our Christian witness in our world. Only God can fully satisfy your need for security. Every human being has a need to know that they are secure, that they are safe, that they are cared for and protected. And only God can fully satisfy that need. Uh, let, me, let me describe to you a, a, a true story that illustrates what I'm getting at here. In my home, we have a couple of light fixtures that are way up in the air. So to change the light bulbs in these fixtures, a normal step ladder won't do. Several years ago, I needed to replace the light bulbs in one of these fixtures hanging way up in the air. So I got this enormous ladder. Now, something you need to know about me, I don't do heights. I don't like heights. It's one of those fears that seems to get more intense as I get older. Uh, I don't like heights. I don't like to be up in the air. But I got this big, huge ladder to change this, these light bulbs in this fixture. So I set the ladder up and I started up the ladder and about halfway up the ladder, the thing started shaking. So I called my wife, Catherine. Catherine, can you come here for a minute? What do you need? I need help changing a light bulb. <laughs> yeah, and, the, and the jokes abound. How many people... I need help changing a lot of So she walks into the room. I said, look, I need you to hold this ladder just as, 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 as steady as you can while I go to the top and change these bulbs. So she's holding the ladder and I am very carefully and very slowly making my way to the very top of that huge ladder. Once I'm at the top, I take the light bulbs and I very slowly and very carefully with one hand holding on to the ladder, begin to change the light bulbs. Okay, now, I hope it goes without saying, changing light bulbs is a very, very simple task. I have changed countless light bulbs in my life. But those light bulbs were much more difficult to change. You know why? Because I was standing on a shaky ladder. And my fear of falling distracted from my ability to complete the task at hand, even though it was simple. Okay, as Christians, sometimes we find ourselves standing on shaky ladders. And when we stand on these shaky ladders, it's very difficult for us to do what Christians do. It's very difficult, for example, for us to love well, for us to give well, for us to serve well, because the risk of falling off of those shaky ladders distracts from the task at hand. Let me give you some examples of these shaky ladders. Money is a shaky ladder. 
Many people, most people perhaps, think to themselves, if I can just have enough money, I'll be secure. If I can put enough money away, I will be well taken care of. I will find security in money. But it turns out that that's a shaky ladder because we all know we've seen it. We've seen stock markets crash. We've all seen banks fail. We've all seen uh, unexpected huge expenses come into a family's life that decimates their savings. We know that at the end of the day, at the end of the day, money is a shaky ladder. And when we're standing atop that shaky ladder, it's very difficult for Christians to give as they should, to love as they should, and to serve as they should. Here's another shaky ladder we sometimes stand on. Careers or jobs. The idea is this, you know what? I'm so glad that I have a good job because in my job, in, with my current employer, with my current bosses, I am secure. They are going to take care of me. And we stand atop that ladder. But we know, we've seen that those shaky ladders cannot be trusted because corporate downsizing happens. We've seen it. Leadership changes. We've seen it. Economic downturns causes some companies to downsize or to go out of business altogether. And deep down, we know that this ladder on which we stand for our security can't really be trusted. And it's very difficult when we're holding on to that shaky ladder. It's very difficult for us to love, serve, and give as we should. Another shaky ladder is relationships. As long as I have this person in my life, I'm going to be okay. Because that person is going to take care of me. That person is going to meet my needs. But we all know, we've seen it. Human relationships are only temporary. And when we hold on to that shaky ladder, it becomes very difficult for us as Christians to do the tasks at hand, to love, to serve, and to give well. On and on I could go, giving you illustrations of these shaky ladders on which we stand. But in Christ, in Christ, we find security that is fail-proof. It is rock solid. There is nothing shaky about it. Uh, the world, and, and when Christians, listen, listen, when Christians find their security in Christ, the world is a better place. Because from a place of security and rock solid foundation, Christians are able to live, uh, to love, to serve, and to give as we should. Uh, Ephesians chapter one, you'll remember we were here last week where Paul was describing to us how God meets our need for identity. He tells us who God says we are. Uh, you'll remember, we are adopted, we are redeemed, we are significant because of our identity in Christ. Today we're gonna pick up where we left off in Ephesians chapter one, verse 13, as Paul describes to us our source of security as Christians. Verse 13. He's writing to Christians. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance. If you mark in your Bible, guaranteeing is a good word to underline who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. Paul speaks about here an eternal inheritance that is guaranteed to us. Peter would also speak of this inheritance. He'd say it this way. It's an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, Christian. 
Christian, there is an inheritance in heaven that is being kept for you and it has been guaranteed with a deposit. Okay, let me give you, a, just because something is promised does not mean it's guaranteed, okay? Now, when God promises something, it is guaranteed. But just because something is promised doesn't necessarily mean it's guaranteed. I'll give you an example. Many people who live in the United States are relying on a promise called social security. What's social security? Social security is the promise that the government has made to all of those who pay into this program that one day, that one day, the government will give you access to the money that you have paid into that program. It's a promise the government's made to us. The problem, of course, especially if you've been watching the news recently, the problem is that the Social Security Board of Trustees tells us that Social Security is going to run out of your money in 10 years. You see, it's a promise, but there is no guarantee that it's going to happen. Okay, God's program for your future is far more secure than that. God's program for your future is different. It's rock solid. He not only promises what he is going to do, he guarantees it with a deposit. Biggest purchase I'd ever made to that point in my life was Catherine's engagement ring. I remember as a young man without a job <laughs> walking into this uh, jewelry store saying, I want to buy that ring, but I didn't have enough money for that ring. So they said, I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll, they said, we'll hold it for you so that when you have enough money, you can come back and complete the transaction. I said, great, let's do that. But they didn't take that ring out of their inventory and hold it for me for nothing. You know what they required? They required a deposit. Why did they require the deposit? Because if they took that ring out of their inventory, they wanted a guarantee that I was going to come back and complete the transaction. Okay, God has put a deposit down in your life guaranteeing that he is going to complete the transaction that he has promised. That deposit is the Holy Spirit who lives on the inside of you. God has given that to you, has given you the Holy Spirit as a deposit, guaranteeing the inheritance that is yours. So we can be secure in who we are in Christ because our inheritance is guaranteed. Nothing can ever take it away. Second, Paul goes on, verse 18. He says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power, now listen to this, the power that is ours is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion. And every name that is invoked, not in the, only in the present age, but also in the one to come. We are secure because of God's powerful protection in our lives, Christians. We, let me just make a statement. Most Christians woefully underestimate the power to which we have access. Most Christians live powerless lives. We have access, Christians, to incomparably great power. And Paul's saying, you know, Ephesian Christians, I pray that the eyes of your heart will be enlightened so that you can fully grasp, you can fully understand the power to which you have access. Let me just kind of illustrate how I think a lot of Christians think about God's power. It's a hypothetical story, okay? So just go with me on this. Let's say you need open heart surgery. 
Okay, you need open heart surgery. And you've gotten two and three opinions, so you know that it's necessary. So you go about searching out the very best surgeon you can find to perform that serious surgery in your life. You interview a bunch of surgeons. Finally, you land on the one who has done more than anybody else, who is the best in the business. So you go to his office to plan the surgery and get it on the calendar and he sit down in his office and he explains to you exactly what he does and how he does it. And you have full confidence in his ability to perform the surgery on you. So you schedule it, you get it on the calendar, uh, it's all set. And then that, that heart surgeon says to you, just before you go, he says, one more thing before you go, I want to draw some blood. I want to, in preparation for your surgery, I want to draw some blood from you. So can you roll up your sleeve, please? Imagine if you said, wait a minute, no, wait, time out. Uh, we talked about you doing the open heart surgery. We said nothing about you drawing blood. I don't sure I can trust you with that needle. Why don't you just stay away from me with that needle? Because I don't trust you. No, you never, you would never say that. Why? Because if you trust that surgeon with the big thing, you're certainly going to trust that surgeon with the small thing. Okay. It seems to me that a lot of Christians trust God with the big thing, but somehow we don't trust him with the small thing. Okay, Christian, can we just reflect for a moment? what we have trusted God with in our lives. We have trusted him to cleanse us from every bad thing we've ever done. We trust him to be able to do that. We trust him to reconcile us to himself when we have offended him greatly. We trust that Jesus and what he has done is able to do that for us. We trust that we are going to be made sons and daughters of God, just like we talked about last week. We trust him for that. We trust him, listen, we trust him to be able to take us to heaven instead of taking us to hell. We trust him with that huge thing in our lives. We trust him for all of that. We trust him for big things. It ought to be really easy for us to trust him with the little things, our family, our finances, our jobs, our careers, our health. All of those things are minuscule when compared to the other things that we as Christians are trusting God for. God, Peter's, uh, Paul says, I really pray that the eyes of your heart will be enlightened so that you would know this incomparably great power for us who believe. It's the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. Christian, you and I have access to that power every moment of every day of our lives. We can be secure because of the greatness of God's power at work in and through us. And finally, verse 22 and God has placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be the head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. Christian, we can be secure in Christ because of God's sovereignty. God's sovereignty. What does that mean? God is in control. God is calling the shots. Nothing ever comes to you, Christian, without going through God first. God is in control. Now, if we have learned anything over the last five years or so, it's how fragile our world system really is. The things that we trust, the things in which we find security are so fragile and so tenuous a, an invisible virus. We have seen how that can literally shut down the world with devastating economic impact worldwide. We can see how the a single statement by a world leader 
can wreak havoc globally. We have seen how something on the other side of the planet, a place we've never even been to or maybe even never heard of, an event on the other side of the planet can drastically impact your life and mine in coming Georgia, just like that. The world in which we live is far more fragile than we like to think. There are certain things we cannot anticipate and we certainly can't control that can threaten the things in which we trust the most. But God's sovereign. God is in control. God holds the world in his hands. One final illustration, Catherine and I, we, we like watching TV series that are based on true stories, uh, especially if it's a crime. You know, somebody committed a crime and you're watching this series to try to figure out who did it and whether or not they're going to get caught and all this stuff. Okay. Uh, and just to know that it's a true story just kind of adds something to it for me. So we like watching these series. But I will tell you, Catherine and I watch these series very, very differently. For me, as I watch this series, I really enjoy all the twists and turns. You know what I'm saying? You know, I never saw that coming. Wow, can you believe that's, you know, I love the twists and turns. Uh, I like the unexpected. I like wondering until the very end. I wonder how this thing is gonna turn out. Catherine does not watch them that way because after the first episode, when we understand who the characters are, Catherine's Googling it. <laughs> you know, what, what, how did this thing really turn out so from episode two on, Catherine knows the end of the story. We experience those crime series very, very differently. She knows how it's going to end. She may not know all the twists and turns. She knows how it's going to end. I have no idea. Okay. God, in his love, has given us the ultimate spoiler. God has told us how this story ends. Now, he hasn't told us how all the twists and turns are gonna play out, but ultimately we know how this thing is going to end. Everything about your life, everything about our country, everything about our world is all moving toward a predetermined end that was predetermined by God himself. Let me read to you a powerful passage out of Isaiah chapter 46. Here are the words of God. Remember the former things, those of long ago. I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. I make known the end from the beginning, from ancient times, what is still to come. I say, my purpose will stand and I will do all that I please. I know that sometimes it feels like our world is spinning out of control. Listen very closely, Christian. We can be secure in Christ because God is in control. There is nothing that will ever thwart his plan. There is nothing that God's going to say, oh, I never saw that coming. Maybe I need to adjust my course. No, God is sovereign. He controls all things and is moving all things to a predetermined end. What security we can have in that. See, unlike the shaky ladders on which we stand in our world, we have true security in Christ because we have a guaranteed inheritance, guaranteed with the deposit of the Holy Spirit himself. We have God's powerful protection at work in our lives. We can trust his rock solid sovereignty. Let me ask you a question. In what, are you place, in what have you placed your trust? And the obvious follow-up question is, how's that working out for you? Are you able to live with the freedom in Christ that all Christians should live with? Freedom to love, to serve, to give without any fear because we're not standing on shaky ladders. We are standing on the solid 
rock who cannot fail. If you've never placed your faith in Christ, if you don't find your security in him, the wonderful news is you can say yes to Jesus like so many have. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. If you'd like to place your faith in Jesus this morning, I'm gonna lead you in a very short, simple, but profound prayer. I would encourage you to bow your life before your creator during these quiet moments. And from your heart, you might pray something like this. God, I recognize my need for your forgiveness because I've blown it in my life. But I believe you sent Jesus to die in my place to make everything right with you. And I believe, just as the Bible says, he rose from the dead. And in this quiet moment, God, I am placing all of my trust in what Jesus has done for me to cleanse me from all the sin in my life separates me from you so that I can be reconciled to you. Come into my life and help me to know of your security for me. In Jesus' name, amen. Everyone looking this way. If that was your heartfelt prayer, I wanna ask you to do something. In a few moments after we observe the Lord's Supper, uh, we're gonna dismiss and if you prayed along with me, if you have a desire to place your faith in Jesus or would like more information about that, go by guest services on your way out. Guest services is located to the left-hand side of our grand foyer. And there we've prepared some information for you. Information you can just take with you and read at your own leisure. But we would love for you to have that. If you're watching online, the same goes for you. Uh, I'd love to be able to mail this to you. We have a website called imadeadecision.com. I made a decision.com. If you'll go there, you'll see a place where you can send your mailing address to us. Uh, if you'll provide that to us, we'll send that same literature in the mail to your home this week. Thank you for watching this video on First Redeemer's YouTube channel. If you enjoyed it, click like below and leave us a comment. And if you'd like more content like this, click subscribe and turn on your notifications. Thanks again for watching.